I just want to know what insurance adjuster or who is covering Tom Cruise because how in the world at 60 or however old he is now are you allowed to do the stunts that they performed in this movie? As always, I'm going to talk about the movie and kind of my feelings on it, what I think they did well and didn't do well, but there will be no spoilers. At the end, I'll tell you how I felt about it, how I'd personally rank it, and what I think a movie critic would review it. So first, I'll start off with the pros and start with the cast. And I'm only going to say this once. I'm going to try to only say this once. But you can get me to go see any movie if it has Haley Atwell, Rebecca Ferguson, or Vanessa Kirby in it. I've had a huge crush on Haley Atwell for forever, and same with Rebecca Ferguson. And then Vanessa Kirby has made her way into that list with the Mission Impossible series. Those three did a phenomenal job. Also have to highlight the typical crew that Tom Cruise runs with, Simon Pegg and a guy named Luther. Bing Rames, I had to look. Um, he's, all of them are fantastic for what is just a typical Mission Impossible action film. Shout out to all the cast. Really did a great job in really doing what Mission Impossible does well. And that is being a action adventure franchise that is basically a more pandering American James Bond-esque movie. I think I've come to that realization more recently that it is just an Americanized James Bond. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that is really, truly what this is. Another thing that I think this movie does well, and it's kind of in tune with the rest of the Mission Impossible series, it's shot beautifully. I mean, it's an action-adventure film, so it really relies heavily on the cinematography. Absolutely gorgeous. The scenes and the setting are fantastic. The camera work really is, is fluid, and that's something I think is very impressive in really fast action scenes. Also, being able to highlight what Tom Cruise does in these stunts is incredibly important. Hell, that's half their marketing budget is saying, oh, Tom Cruise learned how to hold his breath for six minutes to do this. Or Tom Cruise really drove a bike off a cliff 10 times. The fact that he does all this is truly incredible. Like, remember what he did for Top Gun? Either way, the camera work and cinematography behind it is definitely one of its strongest suits. I do want to also kind of shout out the plot. I think it's a pretty decent idea. Like, it, it, they've had worse. They've definitely had worse. This one feels good, and I think it adds a little bit more of a espionage slash trickery and psychology to the whole mix. And I think that bodes really well if you're going to do like a long two-part movie like they're doing. That will lead me into my first con. Not going to take any points off for it, but I'm kind of tired of the two-part movies. I know this movie is going to go make them a half a billion dollars. And they're going to make the second one make another half a billion. I get it. I just don't like it. At least, you know, now i got to wait probably, what, three years? I don't, I don't know exactly. But it's probably several years for the next one. One thing I do I actually have to harp on for this one a little bit is they use certain tropes and kind of almost gimmicky actions and sayings. It's a little annoying. It bothered me probably more than it should have, but some of the stuff felt almost like really scripted. Like obviously it's scripted, it's a movie, but it felt really scripted. Not that it was done poorly, I just think it's kind of the way they wanted it, which to me I'm not a fan of, but I'm okay with it. In turn though, it is also one of the funniest Mission Impossible movies, and I think they did the funniness really well. It's not super cringe or pandering in any way. It's more in line with Mission Impossible standards, but it was done well enough that it didn't bother me. And it had people in the theater laughing. I giggled at a few of them. Like it's, it's solid. While I did complain about this being a two-parter, I think they did a very good job of setting up seemingly static characters that have transitioned into definitely something more dynamic. Um, it bodes very well for what's going to happen and what should happen. These characters have transformed throughout the movie, albeit some of them were very slow at the beginning. 
uh, obviously purposeful, but it felt almost annoying. They were purposefully static at the beginning. Uh, they transitioned towards the end. Part two be great, hopefully. Part one was a good movie. But I do got to give it credit. I mean, the movie is really and truly probably better than what I thought. I have a friend who's compared it to like the Fast and Furious series, albeit he's right in ways there are a lot of Mission Impossible movies. But I think the one thing that makes them different is, you know, these stunts are most of the time real. Also, they're just better written. They're not gimmicky and pandering and almost like low bar intelligence and funniness that is the Fast and Furious. I guess that sounds kind of like an elitist take, like Mission Impossible is just the smarter person's version, but it's they're just better movies. Fast and Furious, you know that you're going to go see something dumb and completely unbelievable. They're throwing cars in space. Whereas in Mission Impossible, you have Tom Cruise actually jumping out of planes and actively jumping bikes off a cliff. I think the movie did well. I, I think it succeeded on most of the stuff it wanted to do. I'm going to say that personally, I'd probably only give this like a seven and a half. It wasn't everything for me. I enjoyed it. Some of the almost cliche spy stuff was a little annoying. And I don't like the part two. And I felt that there was a little under delivery on some of the stuff because they're saving it for a part two. So personally, 7.5. Movie critically, it's a great action adventure film. Fun for the whole family. Like it's it's good. It obviously misses the mark on a few things, but I have no trouble giving it like an eight point five. It's worth a watch if you like the Mission Impossible series. If it came on TV, definitely wouldn't skip it. Part two will be hopefully the end and hopefully really good. But Dead Reckoning Part One lived up to I think the hype that this movie has made for itself also coming out a week before Barbie and Oppenheimer probably not the smartest move but I think it should do you know decently well at the box office considering it probably has different crowds that will be it for Dead Reckoning Part 1 Mission Impossible we'll be seeing Insidious the Red Door today and we'll let you know about that one when I get back